The countdown for the launch of Chandrayaan-3 is well and truly on. With this launch, India is hoping to become only the fourth country to land on the moon. After the setback of the previous mission, the stakes are higher than ever before. India's first lunar probe mission was launched by the Indian Space Research Organisation in 2008. Its technology was indigenously developed in the nation. The mission was a success. It was both an experiment and also a demonstration of India's capability to reach the moon. The idea was to simply take, an, take a spacecraft from Earth to the neighbourhood of the moon and take pictures there. It was a successful mission. India's Chandrayaan-1 orbited the moon and say, say, so far taken about 40,000 odd pictures. This mission provided a major boost to India's space program. The next Indian lunar probe mission had much bigger ambitions. Chandrayaan-2's objectives were slightly enlarged. The idea this time was not to just reach the moon, but also soft land a lander on the moon. Lander is a kind of a, a trolley kind of mission. And to get a rover, slide down the lander and crawl on the moon's surface and make some experiments. The primary objective was to demonstrate soft landing on the moon. Chandrayaan 2 did not meet all of its objectives. The moon lander Vikram crashed on the surface of the moon, causing disappointment for one and all. Vikram lander descent was as planned and normal performance was observed up to an altitude of 2.1 km. Subsequently, the communications from the lander to ground station was lost. The data is being analyzed. Chandrayaan 2 did go to the moon. It had an orbiter orbiting the moon and this lander separated from the orbit and it was supposed to land slowly descend onto the moon's surface. Quite didn't happen that way. What happened was the lander which was supposed to slowly descend onto the moon's surface travelled very fast and crashed. But the orbiter was successfully orbiting the moon and by the way is still orbiting the moon and is still available for useful purposes. So Chandrayaan 2 was partly it met the objectives and partly it did not. Now the Chandrayaan 3 promises to achieve its predecessor's goals. Soft landing is its main objective. The mission comprises of three crucial elements. Reaching the lunar orbit, gently landing the lander and deploying the rover to explore the moon's surface. This mission is similar to the Chandrayaan-2 in various aspects but there are some major differences. Chandrayaan-3 is an exact replica of Chandrayaan-2. The mission is the same, that is a rocket and what it carries, the lander-rover combination is the same. The objectives are the same. The instruments that are on board, the lander and rover are also the same. So practically is the same mission, just that you know, want to try it out again. There is however one difference, this time there is no orbiter. We don't need it this time around because orbiter of Chandrayaan-2 is already there and it is uh, useful for pretty much useful for the functions that we desire. There is a propulsion module. The propulsion module will carry a lander and the lander will have a rover in its underbelly. A rover again is a smaller mission, a smaller trolley kind of mission with a solar panel on one side which is, will be folded of course when it is the, uh, when kept in the mission but the moment it comes out it will open up. It's a mission with six wheels and it's capable of moving around the surface of the moon. This rover is kept in the lander and once the lander lands on the moon, the lander will have the capability to, you know, put down a slide and the rover will slide down that slide and move around the surface of the moon. The lander and the rover will transmit the, uh, the data that they collect to a receiver on the propulsion model which will also be circling the moon and the orbiter of Chandrayaan-2 will serve as a kind of a backup. ISRO is known for achieving a lot on a very small budget. It is the same this time around too. The Chandrayaan-3's budget is just 615 crore rupees. But 
do not let the small budget fool you this mission is very important for the indian space program the objective is not what experiments this lander does or the rover does the objective is to soft land on the moon slowly descend that is the lander is supposed to come and touch the moon at a speed of 2 meters per second in fact that was also the idea behind chandrayaan 2 but the lander instead of slowly descending at 2 meters per second went 58 meters per second and therefore it kind of crashed chandrayaan 3 has the benefit of the experience of chandrayaan 2 isro says the software glitch has been fixed the lander has been slightly modified and uh, because we have the experience of the previous time uh, the confidence that this time that is chandrayaan 3 will be successful in putting the lander on the moon soft landing the lander on the moon is well founded the desire for deep space exploration has always been there what has changed now you know the traffic between earth and the moon is increasing lots of countries are now interested in the moon you know back then there was a big moon race between the former soviet union and the united states united states is generally believed to have won the race it put 24 astronauts on the moon and then after that the world lost interest in the moon because the moon did not have anything to offer but now there is a renewed interest all over the world in the moon United States is interested it wants to send again once again send several astronauts in the moon for longer duration stay this time Russia is interested China is interested and not just these three established space faring countries Japan is interested Israel has shown interest the UAE has shown interest India is also very much in the reckoning it is very important that therefore that India not only establishes that it can reach the moon soft land on the moon it can also establish a leadership position in this now the question is why is it that everybody is interested in the moon all of a sudden different countries could have different reasons but if you look at all the reasons and then you know distill them you can think of two fundamental reasons why the moon is suddenly moon has now become very interesting one of course is that the moon could be holding a lot of very useful minerals and it is now useful uh, you know to go to the moon and start mining the minerals that is one interest in the moon that has always been there but now there is another reason all countries are looking at moon as a possible outpost in space or say like a base camp from where you can take off to even further destinations now the question again here is wasn't it always known that you know it is easier to conduct uh, space missions from the moon than from the earth the answer is very simple a discovery of ice on the moon and by the way we must stress that india's chandrayaan 3 like chandrayaan 2 is landing on the darker side of the moon the pole was always believed to have ice now it is well established that the polar region of at least one pole of the moon have a lot of ice and in this discovery india's chandrayaan 1 had a big hand so what if there is ice there is water and if there is water it can be split into hydrogen and oxygen and hydrogen and oxygen are excellent rocket fuels now that we know there is a good pretty good chance that you can build an outpost on the moon you can build rockets there you have fuels to fire power the rockets and then you can take off to space missions